Welcome to my podcast from Chaos to Peace with Connie. I am Connie Graf and your host, and I will explore with you how a few minutes a day can keep the chaos away. And with chaos, we're talking about the physical, digital, social, financial, mental, emotional, and spiritual clutter that can accumulate in our life and business. In every episode, I want to make you aware how clutter is so much more than you think, how it affects your finances, and how clearing your clutter leads to more time, more money, and more peace. Let's go. Well, hello, my friend. Welcome to the podcast. I am Connie Graf, your host. Thank you so much for allowing me back into your ears. When I was going through my clutter clearing training back in 2016, we didn't really learn how to live clutter free or how to organize things or how to let go of things. It was required that we knew that all already and that we actually were living as clutter free as possible already. But what we did learn, though, was how to help someone gaining the clarity what they wanted in their life, like what kind of life and what kind of lifestyle they wanted, what possessions that would involve, and also how to help someone to go through the letting go process, letting go of an outdated life, including its contents, mostly physical contents, but also papers and digital content and all the clutter that I'm always talking about here on the podcast, right? And that's what clutter is in its essence, things that are outdated in our life, thoughts that are outdated in our life, emotions that are outdated in our lives, and even energies, energetic states that are outdated in our life. And we hang on for one reason or another. And when we start decluttering, when we start letting go of these things, our life becomes more open, lighter, brighter almost in a way, right? But the thing is, we associate having a lot of stuff with being successful and happy. And we work hard towards owning a house, a car, nice clothes and accessories. And some of us always wanted to have the newest, the best, the biggest, the most impressive, <laughs> right? Whatever. And you know, you might think I'm not that way, but I catch myself too that sometimes I fall into this trap and think, oh, I need this or I need that to be happy. And oftentimes those things makes us, makes, makes us happy for a few minutes, maybe for a day or two, but not in our core, right? And then we continue to compare ourselves to others. We assume that their lives are richer or more rewarding. And also partly on what we see, what stuff they're putting on display, what perfect life they're portraying on Instagram or on Facebook or on TikTok or wherever, right? But in reality, all this stuff is really weighing heavy on us. And you might not consciously feel this right now because you're so used to the heaviness that it feels normal. And so you don't notice it. And oftentimes only when we start letting go of things, decluttering, getting organized, cleaning our surroundings up somewhat, we will all of a sudden feel how a heavy weight has been lifted off our shoulders. I hear this a lot from my clients. What a relief it is to let go of things. Here is an example from Leah. I have a whole new perspective now and my relationship with stuff has evolved along the way. I have removed literally two truckloads of stuff from my house so far. Stuff that has been weighing me down mentally and emotionally. What a relief. And again, the reason why it feels so heavy is that we are energetically connected with everything we own. And if you own a lot of stuff, that's especially stuff that you actually don't really love and use or don't really love and use anymore. These things are weighing you down and no wonder you're feeling tired and heavy and sluggish and stuck and whatever else. 
Now letting go of the unloved and unused stuff frees unimaginable energies in our body. And when we let go of things that have no room in our life, we will physically feel this in our body. We will feel lighter and we will feel like we are all of a sudden in the flow again. And we feel energized. You hear me say a lot on this podcast, what you change in your surroundings has an effect on what's going on inside of you and vice versa, as within, so without. So updating your outside world will update your inside world and lead to more joy, fulfillment and luck in your life, even with less possessions. And more than you can imagine right now, healthy energy, light energy is flowing energy. So let your energy flow again by starting to let go of what you don't love and don't use. And you can start by every day asking yourself, what can I let go today? As I always say, a few minutes a day keeps the chaos away. And this energetic connection to all the things we own and the energetic connection to our homes that we live in, that we we occupy, brings me to today's guest, Marilyn Penny. Marilyn is a soul realignment practitioner, a reader of the Akashic Records, and with both with a specialized focus on dissolving negative energetic blocks. And you have heard me telling the story here on the podcast and maybe elsewhere how I already as a teenager realized how our our environment has an effect on us, how when we change the environment, we can feel better, think clearer, act with more clarity. So I was particularly excited to talk with Marilyn about her work she does, and that complements so beautifully on an energetic level what we initiate by starting to let go and clear the clutter on the physical level and the mental level, right? So I talk with Marilyn about how our homes have a soul and how emotions can get locked in spaces like, for example, in our home or in our home office. Why a house can make us feel stuck or worse, how it can make us even feel sick. What some recurring things were that she cleared from properties and what some benefits are of energetically clearing your space. And so without further ado, let's jump into this conversation with Marilyn Penny, the soul realignment practitioner and reader of the Akashic Records. (laughs) Welcome, Marilyn. I'm excited to have you on the podcast. How are you today? Thanks, Connie. It's great to be here. I am super great. (laughs) That's so awesome. I always love it when my guests are great. So I have an international audience. And so in the beginning, I always like to ask my guests, where in the world are you located? And also tell us one thing about you that has nothing to do with what we're talking about afterwards, like something funny or uh... surprising. Sure, sure. Yeah. So I am uh, from Toronto, Canada, born and raised and pretty much always lived in the in the province of Ontario anyway. And uh, one interesting thing about me is I'm a proud mama. I have a daughter who lives in Seoul, South Korea, and she is fluent in Korean. And she lives there, and I've been over there a couple times to visit. And yeah, it's fascinating to all of us that she fell in love with the culture and the language and picked it up, learned it. It's, uh, I blows my mind every day. So <laughs> I'm super yeah. proud of her. And I guess it's not the easiest language to learn, right? Um... <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so, but she yeah. says it's easier to learn than English. So, cause she teach, she has taught English too. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> interesting interesting so I'm coming originally from Switzerland and we always were taught that English is one of the easier languages to learn um maybe not yeah. like the grammar and everything if you go down into the nitty-gritty but just to learn and to be able to speak fairly quickly <laughs> so this surprises right. me now when she says it's Korean is easier than English but she will know yeah. as a teacher <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. exactly yeah yeah yeah. So 
I want to dive into a very uh, interesting conversation with you, Marilyn. And so yeah. I have talked about it on the podcast for a few times already here. My regular listeners will know that, that I always say like, from an early age, I kind of felt the effects of our environment on me, on our body, on our mental state and everything. And um, you you say something similar, but I don't know. When did you um, experience that the environment has an effect on us? When did you learn that or when did you first realize that? Let's say like that. Well, it really, it came along with my sort of spiritual journey when I discovered that, you know, I had an ability to read in the Akashic Records and I was working on clearing souls for people. And then I came to learn that I could also clear properties. Mm -hmm. So then I started learning about what kinds of emotions and um things that are attached to your property that can unsettle the energy and be make you feel unstable and make you feel some things that maybe you thought you got past and and with my history of i've been through depression myself and just knowing that coming through it consciously but then still feeling that kind of heaviness in my space it started to make sense for me i mean this was years later i wish i had known mm -hmm. <laughs> back then that i could have had my property cleared of some of those emotions and sort of lifted me out of it from that perspective so mm -hmm. so yeah it's sort of been an, an evolution of me learning the different aspects of you know a property has a soul like a person has a soul and um, so their energy can also be uplifted and their vibration elevated so that you feel more peace and contentment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how did you like get on the path on this spiritual path like what happened or how did you come across reading Akashic records or doing the soul alignment or realignments even for people and for properties? Because this is not like something that we hear, maybe more and more we hear it, but it's not something that we just mm -hmm. hear like every day. Oh, I'm, I'm reading, reading Akashic records. I would, <laughs> I would say that no. a lot of people <laughs> wouldn't even know what you're reading. They would think that's an interesting book. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a checkbox on the applications, <laughs> no. you know, as occupation. No, I, yeah. I I don't see that. But no, it was it's been a super interesting journey for me. I grew up in hospitality, so I was in hotel sales and recruitment and I always I was always coaching was always a part of what I did and helping people and you know learning about their paths and how I could help them. So coaching sort of came naturally to me. So I became a life coach and then I really wanted something more specific. I wanted to have more tools and I came across a teacher for Akashic Records. I didn't even know what they were. I was completely as surprised as everyone else. And, and then I started diving in and I realized it just came so easily to me. And then I have learned in the past recent years that this is something that I have done before in many of my mm. lifetimes. This is mm -hmm. something that is natural to me. And I didn't come into my gifts uh, of doing this until I was in my fifties. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's a message to people too. Like it's never too late to change course and do something different and, you know, step into your purpose. And I really feel like I, I have finally done that. <laughs> mm hmm yeah, I sometimes feel like, especially like you, you correct me, but especially like with coaching or, or also spiritual coaching, space clearing, I don't know so much about reading Akashic records, but in general, I think it's better if we have some life experience, um, under our Absolutely. belt compared to, yes. I mean, some people may be born as old souls, so to speak, but most people, um, benefit from having been around <laughs> a little bit right before they um do things like this or, or even allow or, or maybe then the other thing is allow themselves to do the things that they're pulled towards and don't care so much about whether that's now something on a resume to check off or not yeah, and I think it it just helps you connect with people if you have had life experiences. And, and I've had a lot of really, you know, <laughs> I've done a lot of different things and experienced a lot of things. So I can, you know, 
I can connect with my clients on that say, well, yeah, I've been through that just from, you know, from an empathic and empathetic standpoint, I've, you know, yeah, I've experienced that. So I understand where you're coming from. And that's, that's really helpful. Definitely. Yeah. I, I I think so too. Yes. And so the Akashic records, maybe we, we quickly say in one, two sentences, what, what it is in case somebody listens and really also have no idea, has also no idea what it is. Sure. Yes. There it's like the internet for the soul. So when you're created as a soul, you're, you're perfect and you're loved. And then as you travel through lifetimes, you make choices and you, maybe some of the consequences of those choices aren't so good. Maybe they weren't great choices for you. So the Akashic record stores all of these choices and consequences, all the stories of your lifetimes. So I was actually a keeper of the records and a writer of the records for many lifetimes. And now I'm able to read those stories and bring those blocks forward for you to say, hmm, okay, this happened to you in the past lifetime. How is that now replaying for you? How did it get stuck? So it's sort of like this repeating patterns, you know, when people say they're in relationships and the same things happen over and over again, that's a repeating pattern. That's something that has happened to you that you've experienced in your soul that is now repeating for you until we understand it and we can clear it. So that's the beauty of, of what I can do is actually go in and clear those, those blocks for you. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is woo, but I have a mm -hmm. practical approach to it because mm -hmm. I, I have been a practical business person for the first 40 years or so. And, you mm -hmm. know, so now I can sort of bring that practicality into a spirituality thing, you know, aspect and, and share that with people. So that I think helps to, to make them under, help them understand it. Yeah. So it's basically clearing clutter on the soul level, right? So yeah. exactly. would you, would yes. you, which you say sounds woo, but I think like science more and more gets to the place too, that a lot of things that we considered woo just a few years ago, they're now scientifically proven. And there's probably going to be the day when yes. this is going to be proven too, that this is a thing. Um, mm -hmm. So how would you, how would you then say, like you said, you have a practical way of of um, looking at it, I always say too, it's like I have my head in the, in the clouds and my feet firmly <laughs> on the ground and I'm very woo right. in a way. Um, how would you explain the practical part of what, how you're, how you're doing that Akashic reading or the um, clearing of the clutter in the soul? How would you do this in a practical way? Like what, what do you sure. do different compared to maybe somebody who is saying I'm only woo and I don't care about the practical? Huh, okay. Well, I mean, from, from that aspect, you, we, I like being woo. I love being, you know, spiritual, but I do live, we do live in a 3d world. So we do have to sort of, you know, bring those two things together, the sort of fifth dimension and the third dimension. Um, so the practicality that I bring when, when people tell me they've been through uh, past life readings, for instance, and they learn that they were from the 18th century and they were wearing certain outfits and doing certain things. What I do is I read, but I make it very relevant to current day. So I'll say, you know, you were driving a car, you were talking on a phone, you were doing things that you do now, but I'm saying this was lifetimes ago, just so that it makes it, it makes it, it helps you to understand. If I mm -hmm. say someone placed a constraint on you, you know, several lifetimes ago, and it had the energy of criticism. So where is that? Where is that occurring for you in this lifetime? Who have you given your power away that makes you criticize yourself or make you feel criticized? And then we sort of talk that out and go, okay, that's done now. We're done with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then that sort of just brings some relief, like to say, okay, I understand now how that's come about. Um, and the same with properties. I'm I'm pulling out emotions. I'm I'm finding out is there isolation? Is there loss? Is grief, depression? What is locked up in the walls of your home that I can release for you? And I also talk about earthbound souls. Like it does get a little, it does get a little woo. 
<laughs> like <laughs> spirits that are attached to your property, mm -hmm. carrying certain energies. Um, I also look at your assignment of your land. So was your land assigned as, as something other than a home? Was it a battleground at one time, which is sort of making the energy unstable? So I can reassign your property energetically so mm -hmm. that it doesn't have that anymore so yeah it's like the clutter you're absolutely right and that's why it falls in line so well with what you do because mm -hmm. you you have the will but you also do the physical declutter <laughs> you help people with that yeah yeah I, I learned from Karen Kingston who can does clutter clearing on an er energetic level as well so she basically Oh. She, I, but I think she does it different than you do, at, le at least back then when I learned mm. from her. So she, what she can do is she can walk into a property and touch the wall with her hand. And then she knows wow. what all happened to the house nice. or what energies yeah. need to be cleared. Um, so that's kind of, I didn't learn that part. <laughs> I learned that the more practical way and the um, how to deal with the emotions that go along with clearing clutter, right? But I can totally yeah. see what you're saying. You're just doing it the way it sounds to me from a, like more from a virtual, like from, from away and not necessarily in the house, right? It's, you don't yeah, need to all necessarily my work be is, in the house. All mm -hmm. my work is virtual. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's all records and soul based. And I can actually mm -hmm. speak to the property and get some, you know, imagery back and some messages to say the house is, is sad or the house is angry or the house needs some love or it needs some flowers or it need you know, like I'm able to share that information, which is great. And quite often how it ties in with what you do, I can clear a property of it, of the stale energies, elevate the vibration and the motivation level of mm -hmm. people in the house to start clearing and mm -hmm. start doing that at the physical level which mm. is really great. I love when I hear those those kind yeah. of benefits, right? Yeah, I can totally see how it goes hand in hand. So you, maybe somebody starts with physically decluttering their home and then comes across obstacles, unseen obstacles maybe, or the clutter just creeps back uh -huh. in no matter what they're doing. Right. And then I could see that maybe it has something to do with energetically what is um, locked in the space, right? Did you want to talk yeah. a little bit about mm -hmm. how such restricting or quote unquote negative energies can be locked in a house of somebody, for example, how, how does that happen? Sure. Well, it, it happens typically over time with certain emotions that you, you may be feeling or people that come into the space are feeling them. And, and typically what happens, it's not necessarily locked in there are portals that are open in your property so your property is sort of like swiss cheese and all of these energies are swirling in and out and you know say an earthbound soul is hovering outside of your property and it feels that you are feeling some say look loss or isolation and that earthbound soul wants to stay earthbound and needs that energy so it's going to swoop in and sort of and connect to that and make it bigger for you so you start to feel more if you feel anxious and then suddenly there's more anxiety and 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 it doesn't make sense that's that means that there's something connecting to your property that's causing you this this increased anxiety so on top of removing the energies, I also close down portals and protect the space so that things can't come attached and sort of, you know, have your, your energy levels unstable in the property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember when, when I learned, went through the training for um, clutter clearing with Karen Kingston, we also learned how to protect ourselves against these energies when we do go into right. other people's homes. Like, how do we make sure those energies or entities don't attach themselves to us and we take it then back home to our house? So I do kind right. of get what you're talking about. It's just, Sometimes, I'm not talking yeah. about it very often because I don't feel like an expert on it. I know how to protect myself from it if I go to yes. other people's houses, because that's what Karen Kingston taught us. Um, oh, good. That's yeah. Sweet. Yeah. It, it's still a yeah. bit of mystery how you can do this from afar, but 
nothing <laughs> is impossible because I learned energy healing from afar too. So it's all energy, that's right. right? So that's it's, most likely how yeah. it works, right? Yeah, it's all energy. And and just like a, a medium would work, you know, you could do a Zoom session with a medium and they can they can connect to your energy and the energy yes. of your loved ones. It's all we're all one. We're all one. We're all connected. So yeah. some people do like to have that physical touch and that ability, but I I I've, I've learned how to do it remotely. So I don't I don't need to be on property, which makes it easier, I think, for everybody because <laughs> you, I could do it all through COVID. <laughs> it was lovely. Exactly, you know? exactly, and we, and mm -hmm. we can do so much from from remote. It's like I used to go to people's homes before COVID, and actually now after COVID, I almost hardly ever go to somebody's house because. I also understand it's quite a big deal to just let a stranger into your home. So if yes. we can do it a bit through the screen, which gives the other person maybe a bit more um, like not safety, because they if they don't trust you, they wouldn't probably come. But it's just it gives them a little right. bit more privacy. Maybe we call it privacy. Yes. So you're not privacy. walking yeah. around or stomping around in their most private rooms of their home. You do it right. energetically, which is the softer touch, I feel. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and it gives that, it empowers that person too, right? To actually, they're doing the work. You're the guide, you're the conduit, yeah. you're the person that's helping. And that's what I feel I do is I sort of flip a switch, I sweep, I sweep some energetic clutter away so that you can then move on into what you want to do. So people who want to sell their home and they feel like there's heavy energy and they don't feel like packing or clear. Okay, well, let's do an energetic clearing and then let's call Bonnie and get organized and declutter and pack and, you know, and then boom, you can get it all done. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. So do you have like some uh, recurring theme when, when, when people call you, is there something that is so common that you have to clear in somebody's home? Like, is there anything or maybe not, but maybe there is. Well, I mean, almost always I come across open portals that there are people that have that un it's unstable energy. And typically people um, come to me with sleep issues or um, children who won't sleep in the rooms. Like there's a lot of highly energetic children in this in this generation, in this next generation after us that are interacting with spirit and and it's scary for them especially the really young ones so i've dealt with some parents who they accept that the child has some gifts but they're like how do i deal with this <laughs> right now so i'm able to sort of just you know adjust the energy of the house and remove some of the souls that are attaching right now to give them some peace and quiet. Um, and then they can move on with whatever they want to do later on with, with handling those special, you know, those special gifts that children have. Um, so, so that's what I'm doing is sort of alleviating a lot of those things by saying, okay, we have some energies in the house that may be an energy of chaos. So, you know, a house that has a lot of kids and pets and, you know, there might be an energetic highway in there, like called an energetic gateway. And it just means the energy changes. You know, sometimes you're feeling great. 10 minutes later, you're like, oh, I'm exhausted. And then you're happy. Then you're sad. And you're like, why am I on this roller coaster of emotions? And it's mm -hmm. because you have open portals and gateways and energies flying in and out. And, mm -hmm. and we just need to, you know, calm it down. And it's energetic. So you're just sort of feeling off, but you don't really know why, you yeah. know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a, a thought that came to me when you were just talking now is, is that what we in the old days called a haunted house? Or is that again, again, something different? Or is that exactly what it is, basically? Well, yeah, and there are different degrees, right? Like some people have like, you know, stoves that make noise or lights that flicker. And sometimes it's electrical. And sometimes it is it is some spirit, it is something attached that's clicking and people yeah people would think that's haunted so i think mostly what i find and some people say you know it's like it's an angry ghost or an angry spirit and i think it's not it's not necessarily anger and it's not dangerous it's just frustration because mm -hmm. there are souls that are stuck 
in this realm that are attached and they don't know how to release. So that's where I come in and other people like me who can release and release souls into their next experience, which is, I think, lovely because, you know, we don't want that. I don't want to have people feeling frustrated and stuck and, you know, and upsetting people because a house won't sell if, if you see so you go in there and you feel like this energy and you don't feel right in the house, but it's a beautiful house. You have these mm -hmm. gorgeous houses on the market that sit for a long time. And it's like, why, why isn't that selling? And it's, it's, I think it's just a case of energy. It's just not right energy. Mm -hmm. So you do you do these Akash, Akashic readings where you say it's basically clutter clearing for the soul and you also do it for the property. Now, I'm what I'm wondering is, is like if we, so I had that actually when we were, before we were buying this house, we were looking at one that I actually was interested in <laughs> and we came out and we were sure there is a ghost in there kind of thing. But what, what I'm really? wondering is, is sometimes too, is like, is there a connection or an, play an interplay between what we have maybe cluttered up in our soul and what is cluttered up in the property that then doesn't harmonize or does maybe harmonize like when we came to this house this was not a house that I would have jumped on and I wanted to move into but it spoke to me it pulled me in almost like so that's where I was wondering yes. is there some kind of a connection between us and our soul and the soul of the house maybe Sure. Yeah. You will, you will connect and be drawn or attracted to the energy that matches your energy. So the vibe of the house is going to match your vibe. So even if physically, like you said, it's not necessarily the house that I would have chosen, but the energy spoke to me, the energy connected to me. And what I find interesting is that people will be attracted to a particular house and then say they start working on themselves mm -hmm. and then they elevate, but then, then they become misaligned with their environment because the house itself can't elevate itself, right? It can't do spiritual work. So, so then that misalignment happens and they're like, why am I not happy in my house? Cause I was before, and now I don't feel happy in my house. And it's like, it's not, it may just be an energetic misalignment so we just try to bring that back into line elevate the house to then match you again to align you with it mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I was I was um thinking that because that that has happened with me a few times that that but yeah. I was just wondering now so you see I always think of clutter I always joke with people and say no matter what we're talking about I always um can see the connection to clutter so if we're right. and our soul is let's let's say it kind of like just a little blonde cluttered and then the house and its energy is very cluttered that's maybe not a match in heaven when, when we're coming <laughs> together right so, but it's still an energetic alignment yeah, so exactly. when you get there and you're like we and then sometimes people will clear their house and they'll say well my house feels better but i don't feel so good. Yeah, I think, yeah. okay, now we have things that are attached to you. And now we have to go in and, you know, yeah. dig around and clear out your personal clutter because yeah. we all have lots of clutter, right? So yeah. we always have, clutter. I don't think we not. we can ever get rid of all the clutter anyways, because it's, it's like somebody yeah. once said that uh, you can't just take a shower once and be done with it. <laughs> That's right. It is a, it is a process. And that's what I say. Like it, you know, when you work on your soul journey, it's like, it's like peeling an onion, you take a layer of blocks and then you move along in your journey. And then maybe down the road, you take another layer of blocks. So it's like yeah. clearing your clutter, you're clearing a level of clutter. And then you live with that for a bit. And then you, you know, now I'm ready to go deeper. Now I'm ready to make, you know, so it is ongoing. All of these processes are, are ongoing. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. totally. And it's, a, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's also like as within, so without. So, and, and when you're changing something on the outside, it will change you on the inside, whether or not yes. you're doing it consciously. And then it's this back and forth and back and forth. And with what you're doing, it's just one level deeper, right? It's on the energetic level. So did you want to mm -hmm. um, explain a little bit? So if somebody wanted to do this now, either for their property or for themselves, what would 
their process be if they would contact you? How 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 do they have to picture this? Like they might be a little <laughs> nervous calling you. So how would that look? Sure. Well, I mean, listening to a podcast like this one gets, you know, they brings a little bit of understanding. They can absolutely, you know, have a call with me. You can actually book your property clearings through energy shift properties.com so that explains everything and you can reach out to me and email me if you have questions um to do your personal like a soul realignment that then we'd have a conversation around this is how it works this is you know what we can do for you i also do relationship readings so i clear souls within their relationships which is actually really fun i try to make this work fun <laughs> because it can be heavy right yeah. like it can be you know past lives and people say, oh, I had, you know, terrible past lives and I had this and that. I said, the only reason that we're learning about these things is so we can release them. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, get, take a little bit of humor with it, take it with a grain of salt and, and really try to move on from it because that's going to make you have the best outcome. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm happy to, uh, yeah, I'm happy to hear from from anybody that is interested in elevating their soul, the soul of the property, it's, um, that's what we're here for, yeah. <laughs> to elevate, to grow, to expand. Yeah. And, and I love that you say you want to bring some humor into it because that's kind of what I'm doing too. I always say like yes. life is, is really sometimes heavy and hard enough. We don't need to make um, everything so heavy we can bring some humor in it and when we're thinking about it how we sometimes cling to things especially physical clutter we cling to it and then if you could yeah. just take a step back and look at it from a different angle it is actually sometimes hilarious right so <laughs> it's a oh yeah yeah the stuff I hold on to yes I hear that <laughs> oh yeah yeah and we're all like that I mean I can I can tell stories about what stuff I'm holding on to and I am aware and that sometimes means I can't let it go. And sometimes it means I can't let it go yet. And I have to laugh about myself a little bit, right? Yeah. And you have to give yourself some grace. I mean, <laughs> exactly. you know, we're, we're humans and, you yeah. know, and if you want to, if you're not ready to let go of something, that's okay. You know, yeah. maybe it will be next time. So what are you ready to let go of? You know, what are you ready to release? And yeah. and that's like your soul. Your soul actually tells me in the house of the soul is telling me by revealing these blocks and these things that are coming up. It's actually giving us permission to let them mm -hmm. go now. It's time for that to go now. Yeah. So not everything's going to maybe go the first time, but yes. that's okay. That's yes. okay. Yeah, that that um, is good to hear because I just remember too, it's like what I always say is like, I never tell you to let go of anything that you're not ready to let go of. And I would, just wanted to mm -hmm. ask you, how do you make sure what you're clearing is in alignment with what they want or what their soul wants? And you just answered that. So perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always based on your intention. You have free will. So if yeah. you are holding on to something, which I mean, I haven't run into anybody yet that doesn't want to let go of what I've found. So, <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure usually when they see, oh, okay, I get that now. And I, yeah, yeah I need to let that go now. So yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's lovely. It's just the outcome is so beautiful to hear. And even, even I've had people tell me that as soon as they set the intention and they, they book it, things start to shift already. Like, yeah. and I'm sure you find that too, when people book with you that they start to say, oh, I have a, an appointment with Connie. I, I I can start clearing things up now. Like I'll start, you know, you just get that kind of, oh, I'm going to get some help with this. So I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go now. Yeah. Yeah. That, but that's what we're often with all kinds of things say, right? The, the minute we, we have the intention or we commit, things are yes. start moving, right? And, and yes. it's that gray yeah. zone when we're kind of like wavering back and forth that's the, the yes. hard part yeah yes because yeah. the universe is there to help you right so you make an intention and you say i want to do this give me some help <laughs> you know open it up and then you know in drops connie with a message or an instagram <laughs> post and you go yeah wow, I was just thinking about doing some decluttering and there she is, you know, yeah. like it's so interesting. Yeah, if we pay attention, then we have designs yes. everywhere, right? Yes, yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's such an interesting conversation. I could have it all day long, but I want to be a bit mindful <laughs> um, of the yes. audience. So did I not ask you something that you feel like this really still needs to be part of this conversation to... Um, 
before we wrap up? I just wanted to um, give a, a couple of quick tips. And one mm -hmm. is about if you have remains, or I guess we call them cremains, like cremated animals or family members in your house, they will emit a lot of yin energy. So it's very important to have plants nearby that mm -hmm. can transmute that energy. And you may even do that in your work, but that's just something I wanted to share that I come across quite often. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is when you're when you notice that people come over and they stay together and this is something sort of for realtors too like if someone's coming to look at a house and they all stay together like the family kind of moves around as a unit that means that they may not feel super comfortable in that space mm -hmm. but if they come into the space and they spread out and they oh look at this room look at that room look at you know then you get a sense of oh those people feel comfortable in that space so that's even kind of cool for when you have people coming over if they stay kind of glommed up together maybe there's something energetically off in your place mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. just a couple tips that's awesome tips I've actually never come across anybody that had um ashes from somebody mm. I don't remember I don't think so well okay. it's not necessarily something that they would want to declutter so maybe that's why but uh yeah but plants well, no, but it's, that's it, a very good tip and plants good. are very um beneficial in all kinds of rooms anyways like they bring in absolutely um, absolutely but if you put them right beside an urn you'll notice that your energy will lift because it's taking your energy it's taking yeah. trying to take your energy away so you feel depleted so okay. Okay. so that's just a good tip to have in your back pocket <laughs> yes very good tip thank you I will use that one for myself sure. for myself like yeah. in my work yes thank you so Great. last question what does peace mean to you peace to me means that um I think that everyone get just gets along everyone accepts each other for who we are and and what we are and what we do like it's just not there's no there's no aggravation there's no frustration there's no there's no uh offense offense like people taking offense of things mm -hmm. that that would be that would be peace for me beautiful beautiful thanks so much <laughs> Marilyn for your time and for the uh, well, very insightful conversation thank you well thanks for having me on the show Connie I appreciate it hey I'm Connie your host and I wanted to thank you for listening to the podcast today. Did you know you can bring your chaos to me? If you struggle with chaos in your office, on your desk, in your files and finances, use the link in the show notes and sign up for a complimentary 30 minutes chaos to peace jumpstart call 